I'm seeing they've just reopened the Burrow Connection in Glasgow. <clears throat> and I was the master of ceremonies at the original opening of the Burrow Collection when they, they first stopped to, started to form the collection. I introduced the first curator. Uh, what do you think of Channel 4 getting privatized? I'm anxious about it, Tad. And I was also anxious about how little the uh, politicians knew about it when they were speaking in the House of Commons the other day. So uh, I, I wasn't impressed with that at all. I'm a great fan of Channel 4 because they question Channel 4 News. In fact, I, I hope I don't get shot down by the other mainstream broadcasters here. But Channel 4 News, I would have said, was the most outstanding news, particularly presented by John Snow. <coughs> so it was very good for putting people on the spot. Brilliant, brilliant journalism, you know. And uh, I did think about working for Channel 4 at one point. So there are, and may still well do. Who knows what the future brings? But no, I don't know about the privatization because what happens? <coughs> I've been part of commercial television and radio channels when they've been bought. And I've never seen that purchase as a good thing for the channel, right? I've never actually seen that as a good thing for the channel. It doesn't work out well because a lot of people who purchase assets start to strip them out. How can we do this a lot cheaper? And of course, the quality and the value then drops. And uh, a lot of the people involved in that are business people and not media people. And that's a nuisance as well, because they don't understand what they're dealing with. Uh, you know, so uh, I'm afraid, um, yes, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But Channel 4, as it stands, is an excellent broadcast channel. That's what I will say to you. And we'll see what the future brings. But what can happen, it might just go to some huge autonomous company who pay the money because it's not actually big money they're looking for in terms. And I mean, when you think what we've lost on Brexit, when you think of the cost of the pandemic, when you think of uh, you know all the things that are happening, that when you think of the inflation now and that sort of thing, you think, for goodness sake, What's going on in the world? So, you know, I think the figure mentioned is not what I would call huge money for a massive media asset. What's been built up as a massive media asset? And I personally knew the people that set Channel 4 up, you know? It was great stuff. And I remember they housed the advertising side of Channel 4 within the ITV companies. You know, and they would transmit it. There we go. Now, what have we got here? What's your views on the TV license? Um, well, it's not I pay my TV license because you've not really got much choice. You could have the television removed. Uh, but I pay my TV license because I quite enjoy a lot of the BBC's output as a certain point of view. So you're getting a lot of radio stations and you're getting several television stations, uh, in some cases too many, I think, uh, for, your, for your money, you know, from that point of view. But I don't think it should be obligatory. So there you are. That's what I'm thinking. Perhaps, you see, when the BBC was set up, you were paying your license to the Postmaster General yeah, because the government wanted control of the airwaves. But now things have changed. I mean, here are we sitting probably getting more viewing figures than your average radio television station. Well, radio won't get viewing figures, obviously. But you're